Hey, good afternoon, my friends. It's Krebs here, and today we're gonna to be playing a little bit of War Thunder. How are you guys getting along? Krebs is feeling just fine, and I think we might as well address that right now. Some of you have been saying, Krebs, why do you re refer yourself in the third person? Well, occasionally I'll re refer myself in the first person, but the reason I re <laughs> refer myself sometimes in the third person, saying, Oh, Krebs, what is wrong with you? And Krebs, blah, blah, blah. It's because Krebs is my pseudonym, it's not my real name, so I like to almost think of it like a dual personality. No, I'm not talking to myself, no, I don't have some sort of mental problems going on, but occasionally I do like to refer myself in the third person. Hopefully you don't mind it that much, but... So anyway, Krebs, what are you going to be doing today for us? I am going to be flying out in some low tier planes, so up to a maximum of tier 2, and we're going to be taking a look at just how they fly in this new patch. So we're not going to be saying anything about damage models, I think we're over that. We're over that whole crying and moaning and getting through the different opinions, we're going to just focus on some actual gameplay at hand, and I'm going to be giving you guys some tips. Okay, so uh, just a quick analysis of these planes. I'm going to be flying out with the USSR. USSR, just generally everyone knows that they have such high firepower. Um, looking at these planes, let's take a look actually. Let's go into these uh, the research tree and take a look at the number of planes. So, by level 2, you have the availability of a number of fighter and attacker planes. You can see that I have about 7 equipped, whereas such ones like the Japanese, you'll only have something like 3, 4, I don't know, something like that by level 2. Uh, whereas you can get up to 7 when you're flying out as the USSR. A neat feature that they added in the recent patch is now you can send your crew on holidays. Kind of nice, so now you're not forced into going into higher matches if you have more slots. But yeah, you can send them on holiday. I took my Catalina crew and I put them on holiday. I didn't really use the Catalina that much. Uh, until I feel bombers are going to be substantially useful in a match, yeah, they can get ground targets, but until I feel like I could get a lot of experience and lions from using bombers, I'm not gonna really bother with them a whole lot at the moment. Just gonna focus on the actual fighters. So, uh, reserve planes, uh, you can see that a lot of them have a lot of guns, okay? For low tier planes, um, the USSR, in my opinion, have the biggest superiority in terms of firepower amongst all the uh, countries. And the reason is, is just because of the number of guns. Um, so, for example, if you take a look at what's my favorite one here, the I-16 Type 18 Ishak. This thing flies like a UFO, you can just take a look at the max speed and also the turn time. And also has very powerful weapons. It has four 7.62 millimeter, ooh, okay, SHKAS machine guns and also a number of rockets. And that's a lot of rockets. SHKAS, I, took, I quickly took, uh, took a look at how to pronounce this and man, Krebs, how are you going to pronounce this? Uh, this is a bit of my Polish side going to be coming out now because I am Polish. Uh, it's Szpitalny Komoratski Aviacony Skorostrelny. I know that's uh, that's going to be Russian right there, but that's my attempt at pronouncing what the SHKS uh, stand for stands for. Uh, so you have a lot of availability of guns early on in these planes, and I think. It might not be actually historically correct. Um, I want a few of you to actually try to get back to me if any of you are historian buffs, aviation buffs. Uh, reason being is because these guns, when you fire them in War Thunder, Thunder, they fire very, very fast. You'll see a number of sprays of bullets coming out. And the reason is, is because this uh, machine gun, the SHKAS, the Shakas, I don't know how to pronounce it uh, specifically, but the SHKAS, um, it had a, a ridiculous burst fire uh, rate in in real life, about 1,800 rounds per minute. Okay, it was gas operated, so it was firing extremely fast. When you want to compare that to like other planes, such as just take a look for like example, the Gladiator had a 7.7 .7 Browning machine gun. Okay, this thing was only firing about one one uh, 1,000 rounds per minute in real life, whereas. This one, for the Russians, with the SHKAS, was firing about 1,800, okay? And that is just the standard version. That's not even the Ultra uh, machine gun. That, the Ultra one is the league of its own. And what they actually did a lot of times with the Russian planes is that they would only equip one or two of these machine guns on a plane because 
it fired fast enough. There was there wasn't any point of even having more more weapons on it. Um, you might as well have just had one or two. And so it's kind of um, hmm. They've got four machine guns on on these planes. All right, okay, fair enough. Maybe somebody can correct me on that if I'm saying anything wrong. But uh, that's that's what I know from my knowledge. Okay, so. I think that's all Krebsy has to say at the moment. Uh, there's also some other PV-1 machine guns, but those are just standard. Those are about 1,000 rounds per minute, so hey-ho, four machine guns on those reserves. Uh, before we actually jump on into a match, I want to give you guys a, a wee little cool tip. So, in one of my last casts, I was telling you guys about the fuel indication. You can turn it on so uh, you can see how much fuel you have counting on down. And if you're wanting to know about the aerobatic smoke, yes, if you check the pat no patch notes, you can actually add aerobatic smoke. I'll show you guys how to do that. Krebs, try to remember how you get to the controls. Controls, controls, controls. Let me let me figure this out real quick. Here we go. Controls. Uh, you, what you have to first do is assign your keys for the aerobatic smoke. So where the heck on is it? It's right here. When you go down to miscellaneous, you can set it to aerobatic smoke. I've set mine to uh, the tilde key, the one that's just to the left of the one number key. And every time you activate that, you'll notice that smoke is coming out. But by default, it's going to be a white smoke. What you can actually do to change the color of that smoke is go into your game options. And in the middle of the menu, you can actually go to aerobatic smoke type. I have chosen mine to be a center red. But I'm actually going to change it to wings red because I, I feel like the center red isn't isn't enough. I like to have a bit more, and I think it might look actually cooler. So, I'm going to set that to wings red, and let's go ahead and jump on into a match. I'm sorry if I sound like my voice is going to be a bit stuttery here because it's actually really, really cold up here in Scotland at the moment. Uh, in fact, it's going to be snowing, and well, it is snowing down south a little bit in uh, England and such, and it's raining and. All the cold weather. I don't know what it is. There's more snow during the March than an actual Christmas time. Uh, so we'll go out in the I-16 Type 18 first. Uh, I've got my stealth ammo selected. Yada yada yada. I think I've even put a decal on this. Yeah, I have. And let's go ahead and use that smoke. So when you activate the smoke, you'll see that it's activated like that. It's not really apparent. Uh, it's not the most thickest looking at smoke and some people I don't know, I initially was thinking, I wish it looked, you know, more denser, there was more smoke and it was thicker. But when I think about it, if everyone was using it in a match, I think it looked a bit ridiculous. So, uh, people can see your smoke if they want to. Oh god, this plane is called lag. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Let's hope it won't lag the game. That was a, that was a great joke. Not. <laughs> okay, so I think we'll head on down over here and just get into some actual engagements at hand. Oh, okay. I think we see somebody coming from the side. Nice little swipe. Let them know that I'm here. And let's try taking them out. SPD. I imagine he's going to be going for the tank columns immediately or ground targets. If I can get close to him, I'll let off some rockets in this. Because he's going to be a bit of a pain in the butt to actually take out normally. Let's do one rocket for luck. Let's get a bit closer. And I'm on fire! Okay. Whoa. Alright. Single shot took me out there. Well, at least I got some uh, revenge of, of style of my own. <laughs> okay. That's the IA-16 already down. That's not, that's not good, Krebs. That's not good. I think I could have really done there. I suppose I suppose it's deadly to get behind a bomber sometimes, or an attacker. Sometimes they'll just uh, use their back gunner to damage you. Uh, ideally, that doesn't usually happen that you get killed that fast. So I think that's you know just a one in a not a million sort of chance, but it's a bit more rare to get shot than uh, to get shot that that badly. Okay, so we'll support my teammates over here. We look like they're having a little bit of a dogfight. Let's try to even up this uh, team over here. And engage the I-16, the I-Shack. This will be deadly. We just saw what I was using uh, myself on it. 
performing a little bit of the Chandel maneuver. If you guys don't know what the Chandel maneuver is, I'll explain it really briefly. Uh, it's where you use gravity to aid you in actually trying to get on somebody's six. So, say for example, if somebody makes a sharp turn, what you'll do is you'll go on up. You go up uh, to make a turn. You'll be turning. At, you'll be doing the turn all at the same time, and you'll be gaining a little bit of elevation. You'll be going up using gravity to slow you down. And because you're going slower, that means you can make a sharper turn. And so as you make a turn around, you use gravity to start pushing you down again to get to gain speed. So that was a little bit of the Chandel maneuver. You'll there's more obvious examples when you're taking on uh, planes and doing some turn turn fights. So okay, Buffalo here. Let's turn around. I can't use flaps on this plane because it's a uh, it's a biplane. So can't just like whip out some combat flaps or anything like that. No way. There we go. He's gone. That's the buffalo. Got P26 above me. You can start seeing this the fury of these uh, these cannons. Or not the cannons, the uh, machine guns, the SHKS. Just how fast they fire, and four of them as well. You know, this is it's good firepower. Very, very good firepower. Instantly out of the sky, just like that. And let's go for this S H E. Nope. Flying on around. A lot of times you'll actually pull off maneuvers and you don't actually know what the name of those maneuvers are. Um, you know, I'm, I'm learning a lot of things as well. I don't know a lot of stuff in, in terms of aviation uh, aspects. I'm learning as I go. Um, and I'm actually getting a lot of interest in aviation. So, I don't know, maybe it's just my time. Maybe I'm just getting a little bit... A little bit older, you know, I'm 21, almost 22, and I'm starting to come into maybe thinking about things like these a little bit more seriously. And I'm just getting a bit of uh, interest in, of military history and just also aeronautics. I think it's actually uh, really cool just learning the history behind a lot of these things and just also the maneuver, maneuvering, what the actual maneuvers are called. This guy is going down. There we go. So we're one for six at the moment. Uh, but yeah, there's a, a lot of maneuvers that I've been trying to learn myself. Just the actual uh, names. You'll a lot of times you'll pull off maneuvers and not know what the actual term is. Uh, another maneuver that you might sometimes see me do is the lag maneuver, and that is essentially when you're chasing somebody, you've got so much speed, so you would normally overtake them. But in order to try to bleed off speed and not overtake them and them getting on your six, what you'll do is essentially make an elevated corkscrew uh, using gravity again to uh, try to bleed off speed and then also trying to get behind him again. Uh, I'll try to do like a video where I'm doing exact examples of what these maneuvers actually look like. So I'm bleeding, uh, I'm blocking out here. Where did everyone go? Well I'll actually use my mini map in the top right because I've highlighted somebody I'll use my mini map to actually uh, try to figure out where somebody is in relation to me. Uh, and that's another really good tip. Use a minimap whenever you're blacking out so that you can just keep on uh, knowing where they are. Okay, so 1 for 7 at the moment. F2A1 on our team, 1 for 5. Very good job to him. like to see players try and get high kill streaks when they can. Seems like I'm having better luck in this than the uh, that Ishak that we played on in the as the first plane. I think that was just unlucky. I think it actually was like really unlucky. Uh, normally that does not happen. No way in hell. He's coming straight at me. P shooter. Oh, but I think I'm gonna get him. Yeah, I'm behind him already. Great maneuvering in these planes. Uh, P shooter's gonna have a tough time. He's lost his tail, so he's gonna be going down. Get some extra points, and there we go. Yeah, so it's almost systematic in a way. Sometimes people coming in way too fast for their for their liking. Uh, it's all all about knowledge, like knowing what planes you're up against, their firepower, their general maneuverability. Can they do they have a powerful engine so that they can keep on climbing? Uh, sometimes you'll have a more powerful engine and you can outturn people, uh, not outturn them. Sometimes they'll be able to outturn you, but you can actually win a turn fight because your engine is more powerful. You can keep elevation, whereas 
though we'll actually keep on uh, losing elevation. Okay, so we've got a German plane here, not the most powerful of guns on him. And also Germans are a little bit known for not being the most maneuverable, so take a look at this wide uh, turn that he's making, and I'm still able to be around him. Uh, this is not looking good for me, uh, due to the fact that there are so many enemies around in this area. Come on. Let's go down. Let's go down MC202. But the nice thing is the majority of the uh, enemies are actually going for the same target, I believe. Okay, we've tickled this guy. Yes, we've tickled him. Ouch. That's a PE3. Uh, <laughs> tickled him. We criticaled him. Yeah, and it just looked like a tickle, so... Not even knowing how I criticaled him, it doesn't even come up with a message how you criticaled him. I've noticed that actually in the new patch. Sometimes you'll critical people, but it doesn't tell you how you critical them. Hmm, okay. Alright, so unfortunately going down there, uh, dying from the PE3. Uh, unfortunate stuff, but oh well. Should have probably checked who's behind me. Then again, there's so many enemies over there. That was whew, that was a recipe for disaster. Now we're going for the hurricane. Immediately, you can tell the difference in the sounds of the PV1 and the SK SKH. So here we go. Mm, that's not quite the uh, lag maneuver. I don't want to get. I don't want him to get on top of me here. Here we go. We're taking him, we're taking him. He's on fire. Yeah, he's definitely on fire. That's not incendiary rounds now. That's his end. That's his fuel tanks on fire, most definitely. Whoa. Okay. Nice. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, let's dive down. All you can do whenever you're going headlong like that and somebody's trying to take you out, you just gotta play him uh, evasive. Very, very evasive. Oh, I've completely overshot him. And who the hell was that? Looks like we've got a hurricane. I'm just staying alive. We've got Black Wing at the moment. I'm worried about that hurricane. Because he's got generally a lot of firepower. But yes! That is cool. That is cool with me. At least that's one enemy gone here. I think he's trying to bleed off speed. I think he's trying to bleed off speed so he can try to make it... I don't know. Try for us to... He's trying to make me uh, overtake him? No, I don't think so. Come on. And that's his fuselage gone, but Krebsy is going down here. No! <laughs> oh, that is me gone. Hello. Hello, half track. <laughs> uh, interesting stuff. Well, I guess uh, landing in style. I've got a, a ride to take me on home. Cool. 3 4 11 at the moment. Uh, we'll jump on to. Let's go in the SU 2. We're going into an attacker. Why not? Uh, these ones have the uh, SHKAS cannons. The Spitalny Komaristsky. I'm not gonna even try to say it anymore. <laughs> There's no point. I don't want to butcher uh, pronunciation too bad. I can't blame you for trying. Okay, Hurricane. I don't think he's even totally aware at all of how I'm above him. If he tried to outmaneuver me, I think he could. We'll see why he doesn't try to. Okay, so what's going on? Where is he? Where is he? Where'd he go? Completely lost him. And I think he's going to be trying to turn on me. Who's going to get the first turnaround shots? Ouch, 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 ouch. Not good. Yeah, it's going to be kind of difficult for me. I need, I really do need some team support now. Okay, let's see if I can try to outmaneuver him. Turn down my throttle a little bit here. No, no throttle. Go down. And here we are. Come on, crabs. What? How is he not out beating me? In a hurricane, he should surely, surely be beating me. I think he's just not flying properly. It's gonna crash? No? What's he trying to do? 
I'm not exactly sure what he's trying to do. But he's slowing down, you can tell he's bleeded off a lot of speed here. Critical to him in some manner, and that's his few slots, he's gonna crash. Yeah. You can see those last few shots he was trying to get off in, in some sort of desperation. Okay. Right. Uh, we can go do some bombing as well if we see any targets. I see that we've got 20, uh, they've got 27 left and we've got 9. Um, let me go on my map, press M to do that, figure out where your targets are. They're along here, so Bulford's trying to get some more targets. Maybe I can try to down him in this. It's going to be hard to keep up, because the SU-2 isn't the most fast plane. I'm sure you can realize that by now. It's not the fastest plane out there. Come on. Aim for those engines, aim for those engines. I'm, I'm losing too much speed, I can't... Uh, barely even keep up with him. Um, he's diving down on top of our targets, I think. Come on, Beaufort. He's got so much distance. Ideally, I tried to aim for the engines, uh, but it's kind of hard if you can barely even keep up with a plane like that. Come on. Overheating. I think he's going in his gunner seat to try and hit me. Come on. Yeah, that's my engine gone. Unfortunately. Ah. Yep, now I'm uh, I'm a gliding. I'm a glider, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um the only thing I could really say about that is play it differently. Uh, SU2 is meant to be for bombing as an attacker. I uh, get some ground target kills. The only reason I went for this Bofor was, well, because he's just so close. Uh, don't think I'm going to be able to hit him again. Maybe. Maybe a few more shots, but that's it. Nah. Okay. We'll just uh, jump on out of this guy plane. Keep the uh, pilots alive, I'm sure. Maybe they'll be happy to live another day. Are they going to jump out? No. Okay. <laughs> Stay in the plane if you will. <laughs> Your choice. Maybe it's just because the altitude's too low, I don't know. Uh, anyway, let's go back down to here. Spawned on top of our of our nemesis, the Beaufort. And yeah, he's going to be a little bit annoying because he's going to be trying to take out our target. So uh, let's try to learn this time. Let's not get directly behind him or else he's going to manage to take me out. Uh, okay, so let's swivel to the side a little bit. Coming from an angle, hopefully. Ideally, uh, don't come on directly behind the uh, Beaufort. He's trying to shoot me now, I think. Sometimes you can tell when they're in the gunner seat because they'll be flying the player in straight and then they'll be starting to shoot from their back gunner all of a sudden. Man, he is taking ages to kill. He is taking absolutely ages. Feels like we're barely even phasing him here. I think my AAs would have more luck shooting him down. <laughs> okay, he's coming on turn around. This might be my opportunity to make a big, some big damage to him. There we go, some criticals. Oop, moved my mouse a bit awkwardly there. And more criticals, Gunner's unconscious, so we'll be a bit happy behind. And who's gonna get the first who's gonna get the kill? Who's gonna get the kill? Me or my teammate? I think my teammate's reloading. Oh he's lost his elevator, so at least he's gonna be going down continuously. What if my teammate's gonna try to get it? This Beaufort has taken so many shots, hasn't he? He is a, he's a fighter. He is a fighter. Not literally a fighter plane, but he's a fighter and... And, uh... 
different sense. But he's managed to actually escape. I think that's. I think it's because he managed to gain a bit of speed from uh, making a descent. Okay, so we'll let him off for now. And we'll just get this Junkers. Junkers over here. Yeah, that's him going. Nice. Come on, Bullfrog. Where are you playing at? Yeah, <laughs> I think he just crashed. I think he was trying to go in for some sort of landing. Okay. Do, 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 do. And who's left on the enemy team? We've got two BB1s. Uh, can we see them anywhere on the map? Mm. I think it's just me and my teammate, aren't I? Isn't it? I'll turn on my smoke just because. Me and my team. Actually, no, there's four of us. There's four of us. How do you say on me? Follow me. Yeah, let's go. And there we go. I spotted somebody. Somebody down there. He's ages away, though. He is ages away. I think it's going to become a matter of who can actually get there. This is the guy in my mind that I'm blowing smoke into his, uh, into his trail. <laughs> oh, well. As I like to say, like, Red Leader. I think it looks so cool, though, having the uh, two smoke trails behind it. Not too, not too shabby, eh? It doesn't really look that thick. Maybe from uh, behind it looks quite thick, but, you know, from the side it doesn't really look that thick. Like, like that. Do See, it doesn't look that thick. But then again, if it was thicker, you could imagine, you know, tons of people on your team using this smoke, and maybe then it would look a bit ridiculous. AA shot down by... One of the BB1s, so it looks like they're at our base. Oh, both of them. Hmm. Very nice. Nice to see that they're all clustered together. Makes the job easier. Let's drop my bombs. Make this a bit better for me and my maneuvering. One BB1. Any damage. Fuse, fuse large. He's gonna be going down in a second. I've jammed my gun. And whoa! What? Be careful. Who's gonna get a last shot? It's grabs. Okay, so now we got BB1 going for my teammate. Interesting stuff. Uh, if you don't know, in order to actually fix a jammed gun, you actually need to reload, reset your guns. So. I'm not gonna... Actually, have I reloaded recently? I think I might have reloaded recently. Wasn't paying attention to my reloading. Um, BB-1 is gonna be going down soon. There's no way he can survive like this. He has no chance of outturning us or anything. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! That looked interesting. That looked very interesting indeed. How he was just right behind me. <laughs> Alright, 16 kills! Not bad. I'm trying to get closer to the uh, 20 plus kill club again. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out the one forum thread I made on the War Thunder forums, I made this one thread called the 20 plus kill club. If you manage to attain 20 kills or more in in arcade battles, then you just post up your screenshot there and you get to be part of uh, an official list. Uh, I haven't managed to do it in 1.29 yet, but that's getting close. That's getting pretty damn close. Uh, one thing I want to actually let you guys off away with before I say goodbye, tally ho, is I'm going to be running a competition. Um, and that is like the challenge accepted uh, competition videos. In fact, what I'll do is I'll make a separate video. It's gonna be so much easier if I explain it in a separate video. So, anyway, until next time, guys, here's my points. Until next time, I will catch you all later. Right, here we go. Three, two, one.